Okay, welcome back, Creatures of the Night. Uh, as we are on our way through Undertaker's gimmick matches in the month of August, barely making the month of August, as we have been delayed for various reasons. Uh, but that is all behind us. We have made it still in Jeff Hardy's birthday month to give you two Undertaker Jeff Hardy matches. Uh, his classic ladder match and a very uh, forgotten Extreme Rules match on SmackDown. And of course, I will not want anybody else to be joining me on this uh, journey through Undertaker's gimmick matches than the man who's been with me since day one of them, Randy Turco from Twitter. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for putting up with my uh, back issues that delayed us by a week um, and joining me here once again to uh, on this uh, Jeff Hardy centered episode. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm glad you asked how I'm doing, but more so I, want, I was going to ask how you're doing with, with your back issues. I didn't yes. know if uh, this is like Undertaker post WrestleMania match. Do you need six months off? Do you need to have a surgery? Literally, I, didn't know how it's going. <laughs> Literally. I, th I thought I was done. I thought I was, you know, bedridden. I was like, I'm, I'm calling it quits or ending it right here, but nope, nope. I am good. I am, uh, back's getting better each and every day. And I said, you know, today is the day we're doing it. So this is, if you think it's creeping in at 30, wait until you get to 40. Cause I, I spent my birthday last year getting my first ever chiropractic adjustment. And I wish that was a joke, but that was, that's true. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yes. So it's like, it's like my body knows 30 is about to hit. So you know what? We're gonna <laughs> hit him with, gonna hit him with back pain. We're going to hit him with leg pain. We're going to hit him with everything at one time. Like, Hmm. Fun. Right. And I, I was, uh, I used to think like my dad had really bad back problems and I used to think like, how much is he milking this? Like when I was a kid mm -hmm. and, and then it hit me last fall and I'm like, Ooh, like I can't leave the bed. Like I can't mm -hmm. walk. And I'm, and if I do walk, I'm walking like the number seven and I was yeah. like crooked. It was bad. And I, I'd never been to the chiropractor in my life until, until last fall, but uh, she got me right. Oh, good. That's good. I kicked out. Yeah, I kicked out. I hope you kick out. Yeah, you kicked out. <laughs> uh, I, uh, but yeah, just your body knows when it's hitting those milestone ages, 30, 40. And, you know, it's going to do something to you. It just, it's just like, it's just part of the game here, apparently. My dad told me the big thing at 60 is you get cavities and you didn't even do anything wrong. Like you brush your teeth three times a day and you still get cavities just because you're 60. I'm like, man, I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah. wait for that. Yeah, that's right. Your, your body says, you know what? We're cutting you off now. It's like, mm, lovely. Pretty soon we're yeah. going to need an undertaker. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. But uh, nice segue. And yes. uh, we are um, treated to two Undertaker and Jeff Hardy matches today. Uh, from two different eras of The Undertaker. And um, it has been, it's been a while since I've definitely seen the Extreme Rules match. And we all know the latter match is iconic. Uh, of course. Yes. So um, I guess I am ready to get started. How about you? I'm ready to get started too. I, I figured out the mystery of the Extreme Rules match. I kept telling you all the last few months, like, man, I don't remember this match mm -hmm. at all. I remember. And I, I think I thought it was an Extreme Rules match with Jeff Hardy at Extreme Rules. Oh, okay. And I'm like, they had a pay-per-view match one-on-one. -on -one. I don't remember this. Mm. But then as we were diving in for this uh, episode, I realized this is an Extreme Rules match on SmackDown. I'm like, okay. I probably saw it as it happened, and that's why you don't, rem you don't remember every episode of SmackDown oh. or ever. No. But that's why there is no pay-per-view Extreme Rules match. That, that's why I'm like, what is he talking about? But uh, it exists and it was still a banger. It was pretty good. Oh, we'll yeah. get to it. Yeah, it definitely is. And um, you, you have the Undertaker t-shirt that the Undertaker is sporting in this match. That you know, the Elite 18 Undertaker figure is handsomely wearing over there by you. And with the new Undisputed title from the Ruthless Aggression Brock Lesnar. That's right. Yes. And uh, I'm hitting it retro. Thanks to you, the Superstars Undertaker. He looked familiar. I recognized him. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think so. Keep an <laughs> eye out for me. Keep another eye out for me as you hit Michigan for your sure, trip. I will. Yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, 
Yeah. So, and this is the battle pack that Mattel gave us in the very first series of the championship showdown, uh, which we'll talk about later on as we recap uh, sure. these matches. But I am ready to get started. You, uh, we are both on Peacock. You have pulled up the Monday Night Raw episode. And which one is that for our listeners? This is uh, season 10, episode 26 Ooh. from July 1st of 2002. Yes. We're halfway through the year then. Because uh, okay. they have like 52 episodes, so they're halfway there. Yeah. Um, exactly halfway there. And um, I have pulled up on Peacock, just searching Undertaker versus Jeff Hardy. It brings up the full match. So I don't even have to scrub through Raw. That's awesome. I don't have to scrub through the commercials. I am pulled up right here. Undertaker versus Jeff Hardy with the full ladder match. So are you ready? I am ready. If you are on Monday Night Raw, if you don't have the fancy tools and the know-how that Steven has, and you're just going through the entire episode like I am. And what are you clocked in at? Yeah, I'm starting it at one hour, 17 minutes, and 10 seconds, which is, they kind of did it, fun. they did Undertaker funky in this match, They, which I understand why once we get going, but Undertaker is the champion, came out first, and then they kind of went to break in the middle of his entrance, like which is very odd. And uh, at least, I don't know if it was a Monday Night Raw break or a Peacock break, or maybe both. And then they come back at uh, a little about 117, uh, even. They come back and they show the undisputed title graphic. And then Undertaker's just kind of standing in there at 117, 10. And I think they're about ready to hit Jeff Hardy's music. Okay, nice. They did him dirty in, in this. Right. Movie. Jeez. But uh, I am ready. So we shall begin as we count down, as always, three, two, one, play. Yeah, not only did he not come out first as the champion, uh, or not only he didn't come out last, rather, as the champion, he came out first and they interrupted his uh, his entrance. Like, he's just oh. some hammock here. Literally. But we get the Undertaker, Dead Man Walking, uh, without the without the You're Gonna Pay lyrics. Right, and it's not uh, edited in any way, I guess? No. And this... um. This is always, a, I know this is the beginning of the uh, Ruthless Aggression era. I think Vince, like a week before, had the big promo about, I want the talent to show me Ruthless Aggression. Wow. I want, I want the young guys to come out and show me something. We need the next, you know, uh, the next level of superstars. So everybody's trying to make themselves a star. And that's what Jeff Hardy's doing here, sitting on Undertaker's bike, getting the Undertaker to come out and come after him. It's crazy. And you see here, he, he drop kicks the ladder right into Undertaker. So he baited him by getting on his bike. And that's why Undertaker had to come out first. So Jeff Hardy could taunt him. And then Jeff Hardy could set his little trap. And uh, Jeff Hardy gets the advantage. The whole scene here is Jeff Hardy is the favorite, not the Undertaker, because this is a ladder match, right? And also Undertaker full on in his big evil persona. Uh, the full-fledged heel. You know, he's beaten Hulk Hogan. He's, you know, he's gone through a baby face Triple H, you know, people want Undertaker to lose. So people are fully behind Jeff Hardy, as they've always been. They've always been fully behind Jeff Hardy. Yeah, I think Taker just beat Triple H at King of the Ring like a week or so or nine or a week or eight days maybe before this before this match. He just mm -hmm. defended against Triple H successfully, I might add. Undertaker's been hit with a steel chair, hit with a ladder, but evened up the score by ramming a ladder right into Jeff Hardy. Right. Like Jeff Hardy came out like 100 miles an hour, like rushing water. But, man, the minute Undertaker catches him, it's ground and pound. <laughs> That's right. And it's so funny to me that they – I mean, I understand why they're doing it. They want to create and, you know, suspend some disbelief. Maybe Jeff Hardy can win. This is his match. Sure. But like Undertaker hasn't been in a ladder match, but like he was just he was just the hardcore champion, right? Like yeah. four months ago. He, yeah, he Literally. Was a dominant no hardcore, hardcore champion. champion. New weapons and no DQ. And yeah, yeah. he can handle it. <laughs> Throwing Spike Dudley out of the rings and onto trash cans. You know, he he knows he knows how to work around a a good uh, a good weapon here and there. Undertaker's on, well, he's a unified champion, so he's on both shows, right? He's on two mm -hmm. shows. He's feuding with The Rock is his vengeance opponent at the end of the month at the pay-per-view already. 
Plus he's feuding with Jeff Hardy on Raw. Plus he's feuding with Kurt Angle on SmackDown. So he's got like three feuds going on on two shows right now. Yeah. And two feuds is going to make that vengeance match a triple threat. Yeah, I was I was there. One of the greatest triple threats ever. I was it was so good. I didn't feel too bad about Undertaker losing. I only a little. Only a little. Only a little. Yeah. Well, they had to get Brock and Brock somehow. Yes, Brock won the King of the Ring a week ago before this match, so he's cruising for SummerSlam. Jeff Hardy said he's going to make himself a solo star. He's going to make himself a star tonight or die trying. Mm. So this whole feud started, I watched the little vignette that came with this match. This whole feud started because he was challenged with ruthless aggression. And he said, man, I'm not even extreme anymore. So he goes out in the Undertaker's match with Tommy Dreamer. Remember he had that little mini feud with Tommy Dreamer on Raw? Yeah, spitting the, uh, the spit in him. Yeah. Yeah, and he, uh, Jeff Hardy runs out for no reason and kicks the biggest dog in the yard. He drop kicks him into the um, into the bucket of like Tommy Dreamer's puke and yeah, it. And this then this gets the Undertaker's attention, so that's why we're here. But that's why I remember Hardy, Undertaker and Tommy Dreamer's puke. Yes, yes. And you know, Peacock has heavily edited this match by having those stops and starts of every time they get hit by weapons. Right. Ooh. Just shove that ladder right in Jeff Hardy's face. I mean, I know this is a ladder match, but the ladder by far is the weapon of choice here mm -hmm. tonight. Right into that announce table. And yeah, and Jeff Hardy was, they were trying to make him a single star because, yeah, they broke up the Hardys in the draft, I believe. Sure. Yeah, I think they did try to make him single stars and then it just wasn't, it just wasn't working. I think they eventually put him back together. Probably. It was cool too that when they interview Undertaker before this match, he goes through like all the things he's going to do to The Rock at the pay per view. He goes through all the things he's going to do to Kurt Angle on SmackDown. And then he doesn't mention Jeff Hardy. And the, so the interviewer is like, What about Jeff Hardy tonight in the ladder match? And like Undertaker <laughs> just walks away. Uh, Undertaker just walks away because he just doesn't show Jeff Hardy any respect. He doesn't even, not even a blip on his radar. Not even a blip. So the Undertaker is Jeff Hardy had all the early momentum and now Undertaker completely has caught him, taken him over to the you know the announcer's position and just beat him down. So now he's got total control of this match. And he's wearing that hook, by the way. He's wearing that pants hook. Well, there you go. Right? He's wearing his shirt uh differently today too. It's like he curled up the sides and how he cut it. Yeah, like that little that broski cut, yeah. Like their little curls right here. Yeah. The big red evil devil shirt. I think this is always, this has got to be, they never said it obviously, but like this is a play off the dirt devil logo, right? Like the dirt devil was that old dust buster type thing. It's called yeah, the dirt devil. Yeah, it must be. It's got to be a play off the dirt devil logo, but obviously they're not going to say that because they don't want to get sued. Well, nobody wants to get sued. No. I mean, you just do not want to get in a slugfest with The Undertaker. It is not going to work out for you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, Jeff Hardy came out here swinging. 
Like he was like hitting him with everything he's got. Undertaker was knocked down, dazed, and then just one shot, and uh, totally the momentum swung in the other direction. Sure. Here comes Jeff Hardy fighting back. The crowd's behind him. Oh, and one big swing from the best pure striker in the game stops that little rally. <laughs> best pure striker in the game. That's that's Michael Cole. That's what Michael Cole calls the Undertaker. Oh, and somebody, got Jeff. somebody in the audience has assigned the Yankees suck, so they making their uh, viewpoints known. Did I write down where we are tonight? I didn't. Oh, they're in New Hampshire. They don't like the Yankees in New Hampshire, I guess. I guess not. So Undertaker has Jeff Hardy sandwiched in between this ladder on the apron. And you know he's thinking about his patented leg drop onto the apron, which it hurts sure. anyway because it's it's the most it's the hardest part of the ring, right? Mm -hmm. But now he's going to try to drop it on this ladder with Jeff Hardy sandwiched in between it like an alligator mouth. I mean, logically. Boom. Lands it. I mean, Undertaker logically. Undertaker sells his butt pain a little bit though, because he's his hip and his butt land on the ladder. So I'm not sure who got the worst of this, but I mean that would have taken me out for a week. Well, right. yeah, you got hurt. You got hurt. You were laid up for a week working out, right? Yeah, I mean, literally. <laughs> I mean, Undertaker's got such high pain tolerance. That move, I would have been done. Hey, I was. Uh... No shame there. I was hanging Christmas lights last fall when I had my back got pulled out from nowhere. So, literally, I mean, it's like the stupidest thing. You bend down and reach for something, and it's like, oh. I was on a ladder, ironically, but I was hanging Christmas lights and I was done for a week. See? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It is. That guy is with stupid all around him. Yes. And I think this is where in the match where Taker starts to kind of like go against his playbook. So like he's going to start speeding things up here. He's got Jeff Hardy in the corner. I think he's going to try like a stinger splash type thing. And it's going to blow up in his face and he, he gets nothing but ladder. It's like Jeff Hardy wants you to go to speed. You know what I mean? Don't go to his game because then you're going to get burned. And every time Undertaker tries to speed it up, he gets burned. And since you have the, the full Raw up there, is this the main event? Yeah. Okay. For sure. For sure. So Undertaker, again, he whipped Jeff Hardy into the corner trying to speed it up, and Jeff Hardy turned it into that um, whisper in the wind, that little corkscrew that he does. Mm -hmm. He landed on Taker. So Taker needs to stick to the ground and pound. He needs to stick to the ground and pound. He's diverting away. Right. Look at that. He gets back into it with a big, a big boot. There you go. Jr. So good on commentary. He's making you know. He's making you believe everything. Right. Like I mean, Taker gets two or three power moves in, and then Jeff Hardy makes you believe because then now he hits Undertaker with a low blow, and you're oh. like, okay, maybe he can win. Maybe he can get this in. Boom. Jeff Hardy with a like a plancha. He used the used the ladder as like a diving board and then just dove over the top rope and got Taker. I will say this, Undertaker has not lost his bandana. Yes. Like, this whole match. This is like when you would wrestle at No Mercy or something and like a guy's hat would stay on the whole match, you know, or shades. Very rarely does his, he keep his bandana on the whole match. Right. Doesn't fall off or he needs to give Hulk Hogan some tips because Hulk Hogan's would always come off. Or Jeff Hardy's trying to climb the ladder and make history. Oh, and a big right hand from The Undertaker. 
Taker's got him dazed on the ladder, and he's going under for that last ride off the ladder. And Jeff Hardy turns it into a Frankensteiner, which good on the Undertaker for being able to pull his part of that off. And Jeff Hardy's trying to climb the ladder again. Undertaker's got a chair. Boom. Back shot. Butt shot, I guess. Whatever makes him stop climbing. Well, that stopped him. Right. Nice rough butt shot with the uh with the chair. And just going to town on the chair with them. Undertaker going for a, a last ride or a power bomb at least. Again. Oh, and Jeff Hardy with the chair. Kind of like stole that uh, that Triple H sledgehammer spot from WrestleMania 17. Yeah. And then, boom, with the CTE shot. Undertaker didn't even get a, a hand up to block that chair. Oh, God. Ouchies. I'm, I mean, how did that not knock you out? Well, and Jeff Hardy's climbing the ladder here like he's going to win, and they're doing a hard cam. But I, Undertaker kind of gets up and not as a no-sell it, but he recovers in no time. And he just hits Jeff Hardy in the back and acts like he didn't just get mowed down with a chair. Now Taker's on the other side of the ladder climbing. Undertaker holding his own in his first ever ladder match. Now he's, I think he's going to choke slam Jeff Hardy off the top of the ladder. That's yeah. what they were going for there. And I don't think he's coming back. That's it. And the Undertaker wins and keeps his undisputed championship. Undertaker selling it like he's just getting out of Dodge. Like, I'm going to get on my bike and get the hell out of here. What a crazy match to have on Monday Night Raw. Right. And who knew that it'd be something that, you know, everybody was going to love and talk about, you know, 20 Literally. years later? Yeah. Literally, still talking about it. Making action figures of this moment. Yeah. Taker putting the uh, very Dudley like, putting the belt around his neck. And he looks like he's going to speed out of here on his bike. But then he turns around, and he sees Jeff Hardy still moving. Oh, almost so, fell off that bike. So this is bad guy taker, right? So this yeah. is going to come back in, and he's going to pick the scraps here. And he's finally going to land that power bomb on Jeff Hardy that he tried to land all match and he hits that last ride all right now he gets on his bike now he's gonna get out of here I mean this is literally a pay-per-view match I think so it's better than some, well, it's better than the pay-per-view matches we're going to cover in October. That's for damn oh sure. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> so he's going to speed out of town. Or so we think. Right. And then he's going to turn around again until, I think, Hardy gets on the mic, doesn't he? Yeah. He says he's still standing. You haven't broke me. So the Undertaker looks like he's coming to the ring to break him. Shut the damn mic off. <laughs> oh, gee, uh, never change. I'm thinking like Tombstone here. I'm going to Tombstone. What else could you do to the guy? He pulls that right fist back. And then... The bad guy Undertaker starts mm. to turn face, slowly but surely. Because he raises his hand and gives Jeff Hardy his flowers. 
<laughs> so Jeff Hardy gets the Rocky finish, right? Like he doesn't win the title, but he gets some respect, you know, like Literally. He's, he's a winner at life. He's a winner in life. <laughs> right. He gets the Rocky finish, but uh, does not win the title, does not pass go and collect $200. But it makes you think like Jeff Hardy's on the precipice of winning the belt sooner than later because he can hang with the Undertaker. Yeah. And, it, uh, you know, Undertaker, four days before this on SmackDown, well, it was a SmackDown that he shakes John Cena's hand in the backstage area, like rookie John Cena. Oh, yeah. So, like, the, he's, like, passing torches left and right, and Undertaker is slowly, slowly becoming a face. Because, you know, by SummerSlam 02, he's um he's fighting Test, and, you know, he's hoisting the American flag, and he's fighting un-American Test. So his his days as a heel are, are numbered. Yeah. So, so yeah. take. Go ahead. I say Taker's off to battle Angle and the Rock, as you said, at Vengeance later that month. I was there. It was wonderful. Um, and then Jeff Hardy, you're thinking like he's on he's on the edge of glory here, Lady Gaga. He's on the edge <laughs> of glory. And uh, he's going to be a main eventer sooner than later. But actually, it's going to be later because he goes from this match to next week on Raw on July 8th. He beats, uh, he wins the European Championship. Not exactly main event stuff. Mm. And then he goes on to vengeance to successfully defend that title against William Regal, who's a damn fine wrestler, but that is not that is not the main event at all. I mean, so, you're going from Undertaker to William Regal. To winning the European belt and then defending it against William Regal. So, yeah. 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 But thought maybe like maybe at SummerSlam he's gonna maybe he's gonna maybe he's gonna fight Brock. Who knows? No, he had a while to go. Yeah. Yeah. He had like five years to go. Five right. or seven, five or six years to go. But he eventually made it. And it was all thanks to this iconic match. Uh a match that people still like we were talking about 20 years later, still talking about it. Mattel making two packs out of it. Um Undertaker and Jeff Hardy still talk about the match. So it is still has such a great impact uh, on the fans, on the superstars, and you know, and JR's commentary. You know, make yourself famous, kid. Everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody knows that line. Everybody knows that line. Uh, but we go from Undertaker versus Jeff Hardy in a ladder match in 2002 to Undertaker versus Jeff Hardy in an Extreme Rules match in 2008. So much like the previous uh, encounter on Raw, this is on SmackDown. So again, not a pay-per-view encounter, but uh, locking horns on a on the uh, you know a regular TV show, which it could be any type of pay-per-view match uh, and any pay-per-view, but they chose on SmackDown uh, as it is right before uh, Survivor Series. And Undertaker yes. ingrained in a bitter feud against everybody's favorite Undertaker rival, The Big Show. Again. Again. <laughs> uh, as they finally will close the lid on this rivalry, no pun intended, in a casket match at uh, Survivor Series. But until Undertaker gets there, before he can get his final revenge on The Big Show, he must get through Jeff Hardy in an Extreme Rules match. Um, so, yeah. November... Uh, 14th, 2008. Uh, and where are you queued up on SmackDown? 107.36, which is uh, kind of the beginning of The Undertaker's entrance and they're dimming the lights. This is from England, by the way, Manchester. Mm. Yes. So the Undertaker in the UK, um, you know, he's had, you know, like I was have been talking about on my podcast, he's been having his mixed... Uh, his mixed match um, results in the UK. Uh, so we'll see how this one plays out as uh, the, one of UK's favorite adopted sons in The Undertaker. He always gets one of the best reactions every time he's there. Uh, yep. This is Jeff Hardy. So are you ready? I am ready. Awesome. So um, you are queued up on the SmackDown episode. I, of course, have the clip. Uh, so let me know when they are both in the ring and the bell sounds because that's where mine starts. Okay. 
And uh, by the way, uh, season 10, episode 46 for those scoring at home. That's right. They only have uh, six more episodes, six more weeks left in the year for them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, countdown three, two, one, play. So Undertaker is the dead man again in 2008, obviously. So he's got his dead man entrance coming down. He'll, so we've got a while before the match starts is what I'm saying. Of course. Um, of course. I, I thought the parallels between this match, the story, and the last match that we watched in 2002, like, were kind of similar. There's a lot of parallels. Like, mm -hmm. Jeff Hardy is still, six years later, chasing the world championship that he's never gotten. Yeah. Uh, he's chasing Triple H as the world champion right now at this time. Mm -hmm. And Vicky Guerrero is the is the kind of the HBIC on SmackDown. She is the uh, the GM at the time. Yeah. And so she, he, Jeff Hardy's trying to convince Vicky Guerrero that he's world title material, and she doesn't think he is. I remember this, yes. Yeah, like she's like, you can't win the big one. You're not really championship material. You're not even extreme anymore. So 2002, he was the one saying he wasn't extreme anymore, and he went out and drop kicked The Undertaker into Tommy Dreamer's vomit. 2008, it's, um, 2008, it's Vicky Guerrero saying that, and he go, she says, why don't you go out? You can go out and take out The Undertaker for me that will show me that you're championship material. Mm -hmm. So he goes out and he gets involved in this. They're showing a, a vignette right now. He gets involved in the Undertaker versus Kozlov number one contender match. Winner gets Triple H at Survivor Series, and he gets the Undertaker DQ'd via chair shot. Oh, my God. So Kozlov, wearing my dad's underwear, apparently, Kozlov gets to go to Survivor Series to face Triple H, and then Undertaker has to take a minute from the big show to go get his revenge on Jeff Hardy. Oh, my God. Yes, and I remember earlier in the program, uh, Undertaker, I believe, is giving a promo against Big Show in a casket, and yes. Jeff Hardy interrupts him. He has the gall to interrupt The Undertaker during a promo. Uh, so Jeff Hardy always having, like, like the biggest balls around <laughs> to take right. on The Undertaker, not only in 2002, but in 2008. I thought that was similar, too, because in 2002, Undertaker gave that backstage promo on Raw, and he talked about Kurt Angle, and he talked about The Rock, and he skipped Jeff Hardy and just walked out. And you're right, this time around, in 2008, Undertaker's cutting this promo um, in the ring with the casket and the lights dim. And he's talking all about the big show and how he's going to bury him at survivor series. And Jeff Hardy interrupts and is like, you're not even paying attention to me. You're not, even, you're not even talking about me. And so Jeff Hardy says, you know what? I'm not sorry for screwing you out of the number one contendership. And I'm going to show tonight that I'm championship material. Yeah. It's like, thought, the old, it's like the old Thanos meme. You know, you screw, you don't even mention, <laughs> I don't even know who you are. Right. Right. <laughs> Boom, and they just rang the bell. They just rang the bell. Yep. Here we go. Yeah, by the way, this is uh, the PG era just started in July of 08. So we're only a couple months into the PG Holy era. Holy cow. Yes, we've got a long way to go. That's a lifetime ago. Yes. And I'm going to take a 2008. He would wrestle for another 12 years. Yeah, on and off, yes. We had a long way to go because I was thinking in 08, we probably are close to being done. Uh, we had a long way to go. Yeah, long way to go. Undertaker and his patented uh, MMA style um, wrestling. Stance. And his, his stance as he started off this match earlier. And Jeff Hardy, is he does that spot that I love so much where he, he runs along the barricade and then he jumps mm -hmm. off on the guy. I love that spot. And he tries it a second time here and the Undertaker catches him. I mean, you can only do things so many times. Right. Undertaker throws him into the ring steps. So we're already going extreme here with the ring steps. And in the last match, it was Jeff Hardy that had the momentum early. Undertaker's got the momentum right now. Oh, and they just sent me to commercial. How about you? They did, but then it came back. Oh, no. I'm, I'm in the penalty box for 50 seconds. Oh, I got it paused. Unbelievable. But by the way, SmackDown was on. I my looked it up for 2008. What channel was SmackDown on? It was on my network TV. Yes. <laughs> yes. My network TV. I and mean, it started off like, I think, what is it? UPN in 99? Yes. UPN. Who could forget yeah. UPN? 
Yeah, my network TV, sci-fi, CW. I mean, it's been all over the place. Yeah, been all over the place. Raw, Raw's only been on what USA, Spike, TNN, TNN and Spike. Yeah, and now yeah, yeah, USA is still on USA. Yeah, and SmackDown's on Fox now, so that's yeah. probably the best channel it's ever been and, on. And I think I think SmackDown bounced to USA as well after the CW for a little bit. Yeah. You know, the funniest thing about this match is at no point, and I get why they did it at no point. I think I'm back now. Hold on. Yep. I'm back now. At no point during this match, do they mention their 2002 classic ladder match? They don't even mention it, which I guess this is dead man taker. We don't want to mention biker taker at that time, but I thought for sure they'd mention like, Oh, these guys have gone at it before. Nope. Taz and Jim Ross do not say anything. Which is crazy. You have Jim Ross, you know, responsible for that call. Right. right. Promoting WWE SmackDown versus Raw 2009 before, a little before there. Or the, so, yes, three. What, as they show you what happened during commercial as Undertaker plowed Jeff Hardy's back into the, uh, the ring post. Right. Yeah, he's going to need a week off. Uh, just like you, he's going to need a week off to heal his wounds there. I didn't remember Taz and JR being together. This can't last that long. I don't remember them being paired together for very long. SmackDown had weird announced teams in 2008. I mean, they had Coachman and Cole. Uh, oh, they had Mick yeah. Foley and JR. Yeah. Mick uh, Foley and Cole, I think. And then they had Taz and JR. They had so many different pairings. I remember Foley was a, a hiccup with it because he was like, I can't take Vince in my ear. I'm done. <laughs> I can't take this. <laughs> Undertaker taking Jeff Hardy over to the announcer's table. Again. This is the main event of this match, too. So there's nothing, or this show, there's, there's nothing going on after this. Taker's going to dump him in, on the uh, on the apron here and go for that throat shot. Oh, if and I was hoping for a, a repeat of that alligator ladder. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think he, what's he looking for here? He's going to go get a chair from the timekeeper. JR is always scared when Undertaker's around him. Never knows what he's going to do. So you're not going to get an alligator uh, ladder, but you're going to get a chair on his chest for the leg drop, the apron uh, leg drop. Lands it. No butt sell. Dead man doesn't sell butts. Like the biker taker sold his butt pain. Dead man doesn't sell butts. <laughs> he does have a little, a little hard way on his, on his forehead. He's got a little boo-boo there bleeding a little bit but they show a replay and there's Smackdown versus Raw 2009 again for the PS3 featuring ECW Stephen featuring oh, wow. ECW featuring ECW <laughs> unfortunately not do rag McMahon of a, a, oh. a staple of the ECW era that was uh, removed from all video games, they only gave us regular McMahon. I want do rag McMahon. That's a pity. Yes, he was ECW champion. Damn it, he should have been in the video games. Taker was oof. Taker was going for the uh, ring bell there, but he got he got stopped by Jeff Hardy and the kendo stick. So we're finally getting a stream here. Yeah, just taking it to town on the Undertaker's back. Like last night on Raw, Dominic Mysterio was like being very gentle and like, like he was treating the kendo stick like it was glass, swinging it at the Judgment Day. And Jeff Hardy does not have that problem. He is beating the hell out of the Undertaker. With that I find stick. I find it very. I feel very attacked that both matches have people just damaging their backs. It's like they're trying to tell me something. <laughs> they're taunting you, literally. I take a swinging it like a baseball bat. Ooh. And that's a hell of a kendo stick, too. I see some kendo sticks fall apart after they're used once or twice, and that, that thing is not fraying. Well, after like being a dance partner for The Undertaker many times, Jeff Hardy must have... Um, 
rubbed something good on the, wrong, the right way on Undertaker. He was a part of Undertaker's final farewell at Survivor Series 2020. So, uh, being, you know, part of Undertaker's history and being a part, you know, be out there, I mean, Undertaker must have finally realized who he is and got, gave him his recognition in there. So that was, I was wanted to bring that up. That was, that was cool to see him a part of that. Um, yeah. That recognition for the Undertaker. I wish that either one of these matches would have made like a pay-per-view or if you see that they're, they have good chemistry. Some guys just have great chemistry together. Why not throw them together on a pay-per-view down the road? But they just Literally. never, never materialized. Yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right. Undertaker always does good with those these smaller guys. Right. They can sell for him, you know, make him look like a million bucks and and boom. And their styles just mesh in such a good way. Like like him and Michaels, you're right. Yeah. And Jeff Hardy's so good. He's always been good. Right. And, and then they should have done this like on an extreme rules pay per view. Like I thought it was, like yeah. TLC pay per view or something like that. Just have him challenge when Undertaker's champion. Have him challenge Undertaker. Why not? Yeah. It's always good to have fresh opponents instead of like the same big show Batista people. Oh. Like, what, what would 2008 Randy have paid to watch these two guys at Survivor Series 08 instead of Big Show again? <sighs> Literally. Right. I mean, Big Show beat him at No Mercy. He beat him. He beat Big Show at Cyber Sunday. Should have been done. Right. Oh, no, I got to drag out to Survivor Series. Oh my God! Don't be curious yeah. about the big show. Jeff Hardy just did a whisper in the wind off of the ring steps to the Undertaker, and Jeff Hardy then gets launched into the first row. So they both got a little bit of it there. And I, my favorite part of this is Jr. and Taz call it like that maneuver. They here's the replay of it. They it's whisper in the wind, right? I mean, by 2008, it's whisper in the wind. I don't know why they don't know the term of art, but they're calling it. JR called it whisper in the wind in 2002. Right. They He just called it one of those tonight. So it's just must be in his earpiece. I call it. Oh, what a maneuver that was. What a maneuver. Yes. What a maneuver that was. Damn it. Damn it, Jim. I do like that they, they coordinated. Like, Jeff Hardy, like, Hey man, I'm gonna wear. I'm taking you on, and I'm gonna wear my black pants and my black tank top. What are you wearing? And Taker's like black pants, black tank top. <laughs> I'm gonna add that purple belt in there for for color. Right, it'll match my hair, and then people will be able to tell us apart. You know, literally. <laughs> but this literally could have been the Survivor Series match. Could have been. Yeah. Old old school attempt here. Oh. And for the first time. In the history of this podcast, he doesn't hit the old school. Because I came on here saying he never hits the damn thing. And then he, he always hits the damn <laughs> He finally didn't hit the old school. Ah, <laughs> uh, we finally get the appearance of a ladder. Right, which this was the weapon of choice, in the obviously, in the ladder match. Of um, course. And this is the Hardy's, you know, this is the Hardy's weapon of choice. Right. So it hurts more. You know, they put the L in TLC. Yes. Boom. Big boot into the ladder on Jeff Hardy. Oh, and he literally just throws the ladder at him. Just threw it at him. I think this match clocks in like 12 minutes or something, and I think the big show casket match is like less than 10 at Survivor Series. So right. This, this literally been... could have been a better pay per view match, but we keep digressing. Well, and how many times have we seen Big Show and Undertaker? Like too many times. Right. Like three, four times before that. And they had a couple more to go after this. Right. Well, there's Jeff Hardy with Whisper in the Wind. I mean, he's usually, he's always done poetry it's in like motion. He's done a year Whisper. after Survivor Series against Big Show, he has to fight Big Show and Chris Jericho. Yep. Oh, here comes show. Oh, man, here comes show. Running in slow motion like Baywatch down the aisle. <laughs> you know, he throws Jeff Hardy out of the ring and he choke slams the Undertaker. They, they literally Wait. have given us fresher opponents, but no, we'll just rehash the big show. It wouldn't be TV without the pay-per-view opponent getting involved here. 
Jeff Hardy jumps into the ring and he's caught by the big show. Sit. Got him. I think Taker's going to bang, hit him in the back with a chair. So that gets rid of the Big Show, but The Undertaker's distracted, and he's looking at Big Show on the outside, and here comes, boom, Jeff Hardy with a chair shot. Taker got his hand up this time, though. Barely. Uh, unlike 2002, yeah. Like 2002, he took that thing. Oof. So Jeff Hardy's going to go to the top rope with the ladder, and he's going to catapult off the ladder, above the ladder, and hit like a leg drop on or, on The Undertaker. Hooks both legs. Gorilla Monsoon would be proud, and he steals a win over The Undertaker on SmackDown. Wow, look at that. You know Undertaker's got faith in you when he has you pin him like that. Right. A clean victory for the match. Minus the big show getting involved a little bit. But yeah, clean pinfall. And then... (laughs) Jeff Hardy's smart. He's got Big Show and Undertaker recovering, and he's getting the hell out of here. Yeah, and th- that's it. That is it. Both well, he does, solid he matches. Does, he does run to the back here, and it's funny. Before they sign off on SmackDown, they're going to show him. Well, they'll show the replay first, but they're, uh, they're going to show him running up to Vicky Guerrero, who I think she's in her wheelchair. Is she yeah, still selling yeah. the wheelchair bit? Her patented wheelchair. Right, and I think he's trying to tell Vicky, like, "Look, I'm I'm championship material. I I beat the Undertaker." And she said she's very impressed, but he's not in the championship match yet. He has to go on to face next week Triple H in a non-title match too. And I believe, I believe he beats Triple H, and he does. He gets a win over Triple H, so uh, beats Undertaker and Triple H in consecutive weeks. That's uh, that's up there with Jericho beating Austin and The Rock in the same night. Literally unheard of. Yep, here he comes. Um, throw- Vicky in her patented wheelchair. And neck brace. Oh my, of course her neck brace. <laughs> of course her neck brace, I mean, come on. And Chavo pushing her, La Familia. She's all, she's all in for that... Uh... Uh, trying to get that money from that insurance claim. <laughs> and Jeff Hardy's confident. He's like, I'll beat Triple H. No problem. <laughs> Otherwise, he's going to go extreme on Vicky, which I don't know what that means. I I don't want to know what that means. Right. So both solid matches. Jeff Hardy, you know, bringing out the best in The Undertaker. Um, and Undertaker showcasing why he is the uh, greatest of all time. He can work a match with anybody. Well, like you said, Taker spends the rest of his 08 and the top of 09 fending off the Big Show. I was so nervous that the Royal they were Rumble, gonna... the Royal Rumble, Big Show eliminates the Undertaker stupidly, yeah. pulls them out of the ring. I was like, I was oh, like, are, are they going to go to WrestleMania 25? Like, please no. And then, of course, we know he got paired up with Shawn Michaels instead, and they made history, and it was wonderful. But for a minute, I was nervous. Can um, you imagine? No, Can you imagine? no, no, I can't. Um, <laughs> Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy does go on to beat Triple H that next week on SmackDown, and then he does get added to the Survivor Series title match with Kozlov. And then what they do is they show, I think before the pay-per-view, they show him in the hotel stairwell, like on the floor. And so people legit didn't know if he had like a personal problem or if it was a work. And then we found out he was, he was beaten up. It was a work. And then, so he had a replacement. And so it was edge and edge oh, wins the, yes. the championship that night. So the, the answer to triple H Jeff Hardy, Kozlov, Undertaker, Big Show. The answer to all this was Edge. Like, it wasn't even any of these guys. It was Edge who wins the belt. But Jeff Hardy does go on to win the belt the very next month at Armageddon. So he does get the title. And it it was kind of um, a nice story between these two matches because he loses the 0-2 ladder match, Mm -hmm. but he, he gets the rocky ending. He gets respect. And then six years later, he's still not a champion. Some of that's his own fault. Some of it's not. And then he does beat Taker in Extreme Rules. Then he beats Triple H the next week. Yeah. And then finally the next month, he's finally a main eventer. He's finally a champion. 
Yeah. And he beat, he beats Edge and he wins the uh the WWE championship. So happy 45th birthday tomorrow to Jeff Hardy. And who I thought the last time we've seen him was uh was AEW, right? He was with the Hardys and they were making a run. I don't know if he's got something personal going on right now know. or not. Who knows? But yes, and there's no better way to celebrate Jeff Hardy than with the dead man, his iconic match. Uh, you know, people may some people may know him from TLC. You know, some people may know him from his championship reigns. We know him from the ladder match with the Undertaker, and now an extra match, the Extreme Rules match. So yeah, yes, I did. happy birthday to Jeff Hardy. A day I of- did look up to see if they've ever touched in any other time. Like they've been in a couple Royal Rumbles. You know, sure. I don't know if they ever touched in the Royal Rumble, but they were both. 2002, he eliminated Jeff Hardy. There you go. Uh, but he, they did touch in one, no, no one-on-one match on pay-per-view, but Elimination Chamber 09, which is only a couple months after this. Yep. Um, they're all these same guys I was just talking about are in an Elimination Chamber for the title. And um, Undertaker eliminates Jeff Hardy with a tombstone. And so they definitely touch there. And then Undertaker eats a pedigree from Triple H, who ends up winning the match, um, of course. But uh, they do touch at Elimination Chamber 09. Gotta get Triple H and Orton to WrestleMania, pal. Right, right. It's like Hogan must pose in the 80s. Triple oh, H must wow. win, you know. <laughs> Triple H must win. Uh, yeah, Hogan must pose. Austin must middle finger. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they only touched one other time in Elimination Chamber 09. Despite having all this chemistry, they could have they could had a really good feud. Crazy. And it wraps it all up in 2020, as I briefly mentioned, at Undertaker's final farewell that one of the special guests in the ring to uh, celebrate Undertaker's send-off is Jeff Hardy. So right. Crazy. A crazy turn of events. What a career Jeff Hardy has had from TLC matches, world championships, an iconic ladder match with The Undertaker, uh, Elimination Chamber, this Extreme Rules match, and then topping it all off to be a part of The Undertaker's um, send-off from WWE, you know, was sharing the ring with Vince McMahon, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Kane, Ric Flair, and all the other people. Who would have thought? Feels like he should be 100 years old because he got involved when he was like 19 or whatever he was, 16. Literally. I don't know when he was on Raw, 93. And then him and Matt are holding the King of the Ring doors at uh, <laughs> King of the Ring 96, you know? I mean, he's been around forever. Um, he's had a hell of a career, though. Yes, and he has. Well, we talked about the toys, so the the championship showdown for sure. I think that's, I mean, they made a they made a set representing this first match. They I mean, did. It doesn't get any better than that. I did not. I know you buy everything. I did not get that only because, um, I have Elite Eighteen Undertaker, and I thought that for my my Detolf that the uh, the Elite Eighteen Undertaker can represent the big red evil yeah. devil. Undertaker. You may, need, you may need a ladder accessory to put behind them to commemorate this match. Right, right. So uh, I thought that, that it's an elite uh, as opposed to like the championship showdown. I think they're basics. They're damn good basics, but they're, yeah. they are basics. Um, I ended up buying this showdown with Bret Hart because I wanted that pirate shirt Undertaker. Oh, of course, you need pirate be, shirt Undertaker. Right, with the teardrop, you know. Yeah, not only oh. Mattel takes care of the ladder match and Jax took care of this brief feud in Adrenaline Series. You have Undertaker and Jeff Hardy, one of the final Adrenaline Series. He's there with Jeff Hardy for this like like less than a month feud that they are intertwined together. Jack says, you know what? Put Throw Jeff Hardy and Undertaker together in a two-pack because why not? We have so many of them. And in sure Jack's fashion, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. How many times have we done? We have never, I don't think, have we done a podcast where both matches are represented by like twin packs like that. Look at that. And you would think that maybe Jax would have done something with the ladder match since it was 2002, but no, nope. sure. Hell takes care of that. And Jax later. takes care of the 2008 rivalry. So they are both represented uh, different companies, but both two packs. So that's really cool uh, to have. Um, I am missing the adrenaline pack. So Anybody out there listening? Oh, yeah. If anybody's out there, anybody, <laughs> if I want to spend less than $140, please hit me up. <laughs> right. I haven't added anything lately. I have added, but I haven't added to my collection. I mean, 
you're looking at, like you said, the Mattel Undisputed Championship from uh, Reckless, um, Ruthless Aggression, Brock Lesnar, which... Reckless Aggression, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> this, this championship belt, this little belt represents about, I don't even know, 15 different Walmarts and probably about five different hours. And then I don't even know how much gas driving and around looking it for it. It more than the Brock Lesnar figure. <laughs> But I finally found, I, I would always find Batista or Shawn Michaels, Batista with that damn lamp. Like, yep. who the hell wants Batista with a lamp? But Brock comes, comes with that belt. And I previously had Elite 18 Undertaker with the Jax Undisputed title, which is mm. not as good. It was just kind of a placeholder for a couple of years. Sure, I know I those Jax titles. I did not want to spend $70 on a title by itself. So I spent $19.99. And I, it's funny, I gave the uh, Ruthless Aggression Brock to... Fitzy, my kid, who's four, and he knows Brock from SummerSlam and the Roman sure, Reigns feud. Sure, Lesnar. So I, I slide in the Jax title with the Brock Lesnar, and I give it to Fitzy because I'm keeping this on Elite 18 Taker. He doesn't know the difference. I give it to him, and he's like, who is this? And I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, my this? God. oh that's <laughs> right. He looks different. I'm like, it's Brock Lesnar. And he's like, Brock Lesnar doesn't have – Brock Lesnar has a ponytail like a girl. And then he says – uh he says Brock Lesnar also doesn't wear underwear. He's wearing shorts, you know? And it's so like, he was all over like, this is not Brock Lesnar. I'm like, well, you don't have to have him. I can keep Brock Lesnar for myself. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll take him. I'll take him. So he was reenacting SummerSlam with his Roman Reigns and tipping over the ring and everything. He was reenacting oh him. God. But uh, he did, like, how much of a snob is he at four to be like, there's no like, ponytail. This, is, yeah, this isn't Brock Lesnar. I'm like, you're like, excuse me. <laughs> He doesn't know 2002 Brock Lesnar, obviously. Uh, that that was funny, but uh, still Lesnar. Definitely worth picking that title up. And then, as you know, I picked up my second Detolf to add to my collection or to expand it. I guess have more room. Yes, yeah, so you need a third one soon. You need a third one. You know what's funny is I I I looked for this and it said they do not have it in Minneapolis, out of stock. You know, I signed up for like, let me know when it comes in stock. Sure. August 20th, it was in stock. I went and got it that weekend. I looked today, just cur just curious, they're already gone again. Like, Detolfs are a big effing deal. So yeah, yeah. if I want a third one, I'll have to plan. But I knew for now I would need at least a second one. When that RAW Raw 30th anniversary Undertaker comes, oh. I'll, I'll get rid of the one, two, three kid and Razor. But <laughs> I'm going to need room for that RAW with the Undertaker. All right? So I needed that second Detolf to give me some extra room. Yes. So you need the gray Undertaker coming out of there and also the purple one right next to him. Yeah. I mean, I got the, just like you down there, I've got the, I found a Superstars uh, Wave 2 Undertaker for me. I found what? Four for you, two for me. No, four for you, one for me, one for Alex. So there's six. And I haven't found one. I haven't seen one since, so I maybe mean, we just got really lucky, but it's all about timing. Literally. I've seen no Million Dollar Man, no Shango, no Mankind, nobody else. And I that. fully don't expect them to ever hit here. Right. Fully don't expect it. Do you, I, and Alex and I were talking, so you take four. I was, you were like a madman when I was at the store oh, and you're like, I'll take all of them. I'll take all of them. And I'm just you like. Yes, up on Undertaker. You just can't. I was telling Alex, is he going to open one and then like maybe he takes four to like hoping one of them is like pristine when it gets to him in the mail and then he maybe do you sell off the rest? Do you keep it as trade bait? Like what do you do? No, that's exactly it. You know, every time I order online, I always order like multiple quantities just to on the, on the sheer chance. You know, you, you, you hope for one. Sure. You hope, you know, that's why I order like four of something. Because, you know, you don't even know how they're going to pack this. You don't know who's picking what. Yeah. You know, especially like if it's ringside or any of those, you know, you, they're picking it off. So you're like, you can, okay, so if you order four, you know, you're hoping, okay, maybe they'll pick one that's really good. Right. Maybe you're picking one that's really good. And eventually when I have all this stuff displayed, you know, I would like a loose version, I'm sure. And, you know, and anything else, if the other ones look good, great. I'll keep it for a rainy day. You know, maybe a trade, something like that will come. Down the road. Um, and, you know, it, you know, you never know how things shuffle when you move. It's like, oh, right. maybe, maybe the good one becomes crappy. Okay, now, now I have the other one that I had. Oh, that still, one's, that still looks good. So there you go. 
I was being very picky for you because I didn't know how picky you were. So I was like, always, always how like ahead. level it was, you know, and always thinking ahead. Yes. I was like, man, I'll make sure they're not punched. You know, I found that other one when I was looking for Brock this weekend, but he was punched and he was a little bent on the corner. And I thought, well, that's not worth it, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, those are the only six I found. I haven't seen anybody else so far, but I was glad to add him and add the detolf and then alex gave me that idea of framing that magazine ad that yes. says undertake them all and i didn't have to ruin the magazine because it's um you just open it and it's both pages you open the magazine and just put the magazine in the frame so you don't have to take the staples out or ruin anything love it it's great and i thought it fit really nice up there it kind of uh I, I'm not undertaking them all. You are undertaking them all, but I thought it would look and cool. It's funny, and it's funny you mentioned like things I buy in multiple quantities. The uh, the thing that this, the thing that preceded this, that Masters of the WWE Universe. Yeah. I only saw the Undertaker twice. One was unpunched. One was punched. I bought them both. Wow. That was it. I don't. I don't think I ever. I had a buddy. I have a buddy that works at a comic shop and so somehow he knew a buddy who knew a guy who knew mel gibson and oh, like of course everybody knows mel gibson <laughs> he made it work through a buddy and got one for me but i never saw one i was killing myself trying to find one in the wild and i could not find an undertaker yeah. i never saw one yeah they hit it, like they put they put once i think they it's like they open two boxes they put one box unpunched standing and then they punch the other ones through the thing it's like well I'm, i'll never find this again so I bought both Undertakers. I'll probably end up opening the uh, the punched one eventually on display. Sure. I had that one unpunched, and I'm like, oh god, I hope that one, hope that one makes the move eventually because that thing's like going for like 150 bucks. Right. Yeah, I left mine in the box. That was one of them. I don't leave a lot of them in the box, but like the packaging is pretty cool. Sometimes I'll leave you didn't leave here. him in the box. It, the packaging is like so different. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. I should have, but uh, he is cool, as you know, when you get him out. He is pretty cool. Um, I mean, it's one of the better Taker figures I've seen lately. Yeah. It's pretty pretty nice. I wanted to size him up with that decade of destruction, or a decade of domination Undertaker, but like I said, my guy's in a coffin, and I didn't want to pull him out. But you said you said DOD is a little bit taller than that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would like, probably like this taller. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, my my decade of dominations. He's in an, he's in a coffin holding Paul Bear's urn, and if you oh. like, if you even open the detolf the wrong oh, it way, it falls out. Yeah, you will drop the urn. Yeah, <laughs> those detolfs, the detolfs. When you open it, it jars everything. Yeah, I put uh, I put felt down at the bottom magnet to try to like dumb it down a little bit, like cut so like the magnet won't. It has to oh, go nice. through two pieces of felt to like. It still does it a little bit though. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it is satisfying. I come down here and I'm like, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Relish in the Undertaker collection. So you so you said it, man. Next next month, uh, September is yes. going to be... September is the Cheers match at TLC against Batista. And then a biker chain match at No Mercy 2003 against Brock Lesnar. Like I, we were just talking about, so uh, I'll have to I'll have to put in my uh I'll have to steal the Brock Lesnar from Fitzy for a night and I'll put him down here. <laughs> oh, maybe you'll that. find another one. Hey, why not? Oh my gosh, and that was that was another one where when you're struggling to find something, and then you find you, I feel like I make animal noises in the store because I'm like, oh, and and I was there and I was looking in the aisle and they had a whole bunch of like they had Elite eighty eight, Elite eighty nine, and I'm like, this is all old, like. They don't have, they don't even have ruthless aggression here. And I was walking down the aisle, getting ready to leave. And I thought I should look behind me for AEW, at least look, while I'm here. Let me look at the AEW figures. Maybe I can find, they have those chases. Yes. Yeah. That's like a $50, that's like a $50 bill. If you can find one, you know, right. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll look since I'm here. And I turned around and I not only saw the AEW figs, but they also had more wwe and they had ruthless aggression and there was two yeah. brock oh, rookie move you didn't even look around when you're at the wrestling section oh you gotta look well, at they, they had two wrestling sections which 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 that was a curveball because I, I usually look o over stock shelf i look under i make sure kids didn't put it in the wrong little area gotta look but, everywhere but behind me they had a whole other wrestling section and there was brock staring at me and i was like oh. glorious yes, literally <laughs> Oh my gosh, but 
that yeah it's you never know what you're going to find and you never know where you're going to find it right yeah yep, all the way back at my old house i just moved 40 minutes and i had to drive 40 oh minutes back God. found them i go. went to wisconsin i told you i went to wisconsin looking for yeah. brock and yeah. i didn't find them yeah now you're gonna go to michigan and you'll probably be flooded with lesnar yeah, I'll have to check. I didn't even think about looking. I'll have to peek in uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and uh, Ohio, like right on the border, oh, so I can do I can do both. Eye out for more taker. Yeah, or any of the other ones in that line. No, yeah, no taker left behind. Uh, Elite ninety four. I think it's a little early, but I'll look. I'll keep looking for Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. I sent you the Amazon link. Yep, I do have the Amazon link. If I if I decide I want to give in to temptation. <laughs> there you go. So anything else before we wrap up this episode? No, sir. Okay. So as always, thank you to Randy for joining me here on this magnificent journey through Undertaker's gimmick matches. We are weeding through them. And uh, if you think you're ready for September, don't worry, as we got quite an episode planned for October. Um, but until then, uh, Creatures of the Night, make sure to follow Randy at Pokey's Little Dog on Twitter. Uh, don't ever change that handle, Randy. It's too good to, to, to ever change. <laughs> and follow me at Collect Up Dead on Twitter, at Collecting Dead Man on Instagram. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And uh, also make sure to leave me a five-star rating and review if you are listening on your podcast platform. And as always, we will be back next time. Same take a time, same take a channel as we keep on rolling, baby. Until next time. Thank you as always, Randy. Thank you. See you next month. See you next month.